I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing a video, a list of the games that I... Where the hype died. A game where the hype died. This specifically is a list of crowdfunding campaigns, 11 to be precise, in which the hype for that game died. I backed the game, I got it, and then I just didn't play it. Now, to be very clear, this is not a situation in which, you know, I got the game and then I I, I played the game and it wasn't for me or something happened. This specifically is a list of, of where I was excited, I wanted to back it, there's a reason I was interested in it, and some of these games are games I covered, and that's always a complicated conversation too, because I'm like, hey, it's a 4 to 5, and then I'm like, I backed it and I don't even care anymore, and that does happen. Fortunately, it is the exception. I've backed hundreds and hundreds of games in my time, my years in crowdfunding, and these are the 11 that I could find. This is not a top 10 list, this is a top 11 list, because those are the 11 games that I could find that I could say to myself, I'm just less excited. I was excited back then, times have moved on, I'm less excited now. Sometimes it's just an issue of a game not me not remembering how the game was, or me not remember. Maybe some of these games, as soon as I play them, I'll be like, oh my gosh, so this is why I was interested, this is why I liked it, those are part of the conversation. But some of these games are just games where, for whatever reason, I haven't played it and the hype died, and there are asterisks to it, but you know what? Let's go ahead and start this off. But the general idea of all these games is they're not games that I got rid of because, or I'm, I mean, none of these games are games I got rid of, I actually have all these games. Uh, I have maybe 10 of these games. I think I've gotten rid of one of these games so far. I have the other 10. But either way, let's go ahead and start this off, starting off with Alter Quest. Alter Quest in what is one in particular, which I don't even know if this fully classifies for this list, which might make it a top 10 list after all. And these are, by the way, in alphabetical order, but Alter Quest is one that I played, I got the game, I backed the game, I was incredibly excited about the game, I had played Street Masters and I liked it a lot. I did get rid of Street Masters, Street Masters is from the same designers, using the same MDS, the modular deck system, and it has overlap in terms of the way you'll, you'll approach the game, but first of all, I prefer a medieval theme to begin with, and then also for me, Street Masters ultimately, I felt it was very comparable to Marvel Champions and the experience I got out of the games when I played them, and for me, I preferred Marvel Champions at least at the time. I kind of want to dive back into Street Masters, it's been so long and I, I have fond memories of my time with it. It, but either way, that's neither here nor there. Also, Street Master is very similar to Sentinels of the Multiverse, which I also very much enjoy. But for me, this game, Alter Quest, is one that I got the game, I was excited about the game, I unboxed the game, I sat down and set up the game, I opened the rulebook for the game, and I didn't get a good sense of how to play it. It's one that I struggled through the rules and kind of just put it away and stopped playing. Now, recently, I am currently motivated to play through this because recently I've been playing through Tenaris Adventures, which that, that was definitely, Tenaris Adventures is one of those games that was definitely a lot to, to go through a lot to uh a lot to pick up, but I what kept me going there is I knew that I loved the uh, Arena of the Contest and I played Arena of the Contest, so, so it kept me going and so I dove into it. Then there's Massive Darkness, which is actually a fairly easy one to pick up, but I sat down with that one. I spent a few days last week just diving into a few games of that, going through it, and really enjoyed that one. And then also it's worth noting because these videos don't always get filmed uh, whenever they go up. My Massive Darkness review is going up next week, which for you might be in the past. So when you're like, oh, you know, I finally dove into Massive Darkness and all that. But either way, this is one Alter Quest. Alter Quest is one that I think I just need another time, another day, to sit down and power through the rules. I think that's all I need to do. Maybe, who knows, maybe that day will be today. Maybe, not today, tomorrow. Today's not going to happen for sure. Maybe that day will be tomorrow. I want to play this game. I I think there's a lot here, before, uh, but I tried going through the rules, and then it's been sitting around for a year and a half plus, by two years now, and it just hasn't been tabled. And like, I'm at the point where I, I want to get rid of. It's been on my shelf to get rid of for a while. I have a specific shelf where I put games that I think I should get rid of. And then I kind of see, you know, how much I care or don't care. In the case of AlterQuest, it's been there for a while. Also, I'm only just realizing that this merchant tier is like misspelled. That's the merchant tier. So the merchant tier, which is arguably spelled phonetically correctly, but not correctly correctly. Either way, AlterQuest. I have problems because I want to dive into the Master of Darkness campaign tomorrow, but I also want to play Alter Quest tomorrow, so now I don't know what I'll do. I'm going to go to BGG after this video, and I'm going to print out the uh, the rule set that supposedly is a better, easier way to dive into this game, and I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. I really, really want to play Alter Quest, but I guess maybe this is a bad start to a video about the hype dying, but I just... It didn't happen. Something happened, I got the game, my excitement was there, and it didn't get tabled, and now we're here two years later, and I really should sit down and table this game. Number one is going to be Alter Quest for me. 
Number two is one that actually hasn't shown up yet, but it should be showing up very, very shortly. Uh, this is Astronites. Astronites, which is a kind of redone version of Aeon's End, a game that I had a chance to play this one, and I liked it more than Aeon's End. For sure, not even a question, I liked it more than Aeon's End, with one caveat, and that caveat has been sticking in my mind since I backed this game. You see, Aeon's End is an incredibly popular deck building system that many people love, and it's a game system that has a lot of things going for it, and one of the things is that you never really shuffle your deck. You have your deck going in a specific order, but there's a lot more going for Aeon's End, and it's a system that that has worked for a lot of people and has a ton of expansions and Astro Knights takes a lot of elements of Aeon's End but for me makes most of those better. Uh, if nothing else I just like the difference in the terms of the way the spell slots are prepared. I like the general high accessibility of the game and how quick it is to dive into it. I like the asymmetric characters, the bosses you're fighting against. You can clearly see the DNA of Aeon's End in this system but for me I like how it presents it better at least so far with one fairly large caveat and that caveat has been sticking with me which is I like the pre-built -built deck system in Aeon's End, meaning in Aeon's End has a fixed market deck. You have a, this, these are both deck building games, and in Aeon's End you basically take nine specific cards, you put them out, and you work with those nine cards to create the puzzle of how you're going to build your deck. Versus in Astronites you are working with a rotating card row, and both those systems are very popular in deck building games, but for me I have always drastically preferred fixed card systems, and so for me Astronites was better than Aeon's End in every other sense. But then in a key part of the way I approach deck building games, it was worse. And so I backed the game. I covered the game. I reviewed it. I, it wasn't a perfect score, not by a long shot, but I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to continue to dive into this and see more of the system. But I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to approach this or deal with this. All I know is that I want... I both want to play Astronites, and I will be playing Astronites when it comes. I'll be diving back into it and seeing, because it's one of those things where, again, time, absence can make the heart grow fonder, but in the case of board games, I find absence often has me remembering the games that I love because I'm playing them, and forgetting the games that I haven't played in a while. In the case of Astronites, I plan on playing it when it shows up, and seeing whether it holds up for me. I really enjoy playing this both solo and multiplayer, and I want to see how this game ultimately does deliver once it, well, does deliver. All that said, we're going to find out, but I'm definitely less excited, and I think it's that rotating market aspect. I think the rotating mar market aspect, you know what I might even do? I might even try to go through the, the game and pull out the cards and create a fixed market deck out of it. I might try to break that system to give me what I like out of it, although it may not work for what it's doing. I don't know. I don't know. Overall, all I know is my level of excitement about Astronites at the time, I'm kind of in a place where I kind of mentally expect to get rid of it, but we'll definitely be giving it a fair shake when it does show up shortly, and that is Astronites. The only one on the list which is I've actually gotten rid of is Bone to Pick. Bone to Pick is a push your luck system of kind of zombie villagers attacking you as you play cards, you play numbers down. This was one that I, I had a chance to cover this in a very brief campaign, as a short campaign, I got the game mid-campaign, and I had a chance to cover it, and I really enjoyed it. And this is one of those times where it might even be, I don't, I don't know, all I know is I got the game, I covered the game, and then it showed up, and I was like, you know what, I really enjoyed playing through it, and it was a lot of fun, but ultimately I think I just prefer other push your luck systems over it. I think I prefer other push your luck games over this game, despite enjoying it. And so I, I had a chance, I, I, I got to play it, I got to enjoy it, I got to see what the game is like, and that push your luck, semi-cooperative, semi-not-cooperative aspect of going through the game, and it is a semi-co-op to a degree, if I recall correctly, but it's one that, that did work just because of how light and party-themed it, it's, it's going for, and then I got it, and I was like, you know what, I'd rather play Can't Stop, I'd rather play uh, Captain Carcass, and there are a few other push luck games that I think give me uh, the same things that this game gives me, but in a cleaner, non-semi-co-op aspect. And so again, nothing changed, nothing happened, it's one that I definitely feel bad for, because again, whenever I review something, and then, and I do feel, again, I reviewed it, I gave caveats, I gave, gave you know, the things I didn't like, but it's definitely one of those things where time moved on, I was like, you know what, I don't, I'm not in, as in love with it as I was when I first played it. And I was not, again, in love with it as a very con, strong, strong terminology. If I recall correctly, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, which is good, but it's then a 3.5 that I kind of just moved on from instead of actually picking up and holding on to. My number four is Dinosaur World, and this one I have no, you see, here's an interesting question as well for some of these games, which is some of these, some of these, maybe we'll do this at the end of the video, but the question is, in hindsight, should I or should I not have backed it? Meaning, what changed along the way? And in the case of Dinosaur World, in hindsight, I absolutely would have backed this one as well. This is one where I play Dinosaur Island and I like the core bones of Dinosaur Island enough that I was intrigued as to whether this game would or wouldn't work for me. I hated the theme of Dinosaur Island, but I like the game. And so I, cho I chose to go ahead and back Dinosaur World, trying to see if this one would, wor would or wouldn't work for me because the thematically, I mean, the same theme is there, but the, um, the visual presentation of Dinosaur World is much better to me than Dinosaur Island. And that's enough that I was like, you know what? I have all these Dinosaur Maples. I have this thing. I'm going to try this 
it out, and then I got it, and just nobody seemed to be excited about the game. It's liked, but nobody ever seems to be excited about Dinosaur World, and every person I ever spoke to was like, eh, you're probably going to move on from it. And that continued insistence that it's not going to be a game that I hold on to or keep eventually had me getting rid of it, with the caveat that, specifically there's a video with Professor Meg where she's like, eh, you know what, just get rid of it, you can always play my copy and see if you like it there, which has a downside to it, because if I play it and I love it, I'll want it, but I think that for me, ultimately, this is one that I played, and the lack of general people's excitement once it landed had me continuously pushing it down my own excitement queue of how much I want to play this game versus how much I want to play any of the other games I always have sitting in the background waiting to be played. And so Dinosaur World, as much as I think it's a game I'll enjoy, it kind of moved into the section of being a game that I think I'll merely like, and it was taking up half of a Callus Cubby, or more than half of a Callus Cubby, trying to keep it all together, and so I did eventually move on from this one. It is, without, without playing it, I still have not played this one. I still want to play it, I still plan on playing it at some point, but at this point I almost hope I don't love it, because if I play it and I love it, I will absolutely want it back. But that is going to be Dinosaur World, a game that I want to like, but don't know. I don't know. And Dinosaur Island Roar and Write didn't work for me. That's a game that's that's a system that is loved by many, by the way. Dinosaur Island Roar and Write actually gets more buzz than Dinosaur Dinosaur World, in my opinion. But for me, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, I did not like one bit. And so, um, yeah, we're gonna move on. I, I have to play that game with Chris George. Chris George from Room Board really likes that game. And I want to try playing with him. I want to try seeing how it is playing it together with somebody who I already know loves it. And to see either whether I've been playing it horrifically wrong, which is always a possibility, or even just whether playing with somebody who I know enjoys it, how that affects my own experience in the game, because that absolutely can have an effect. And then, of course, I could put out a giant video calling it I was wrong or something. I don't, I don't know. It's not that big a game to do that. But moving on, we have another D, another D, which is Dragon Bond Lords of Valor from Jaco Studios. Now, this one actually just showed up. It's currently on my shelf over there down below, and I, I'm both excited about this one, but also less excited about this one. See, Dragon Ball Lords of Valor is one that I played, and I have fond memories of playing this. Again, this is where the, the caveat comes in, because it's not that I don't like the game. In the case of Bone to Pick, for example, Bone to Pick, that push your luck one, I think I do have direct comparisons that I'd rather play over it, versus Dragon Ball Lords of Valor is a game that I liked. It had a lot of fun little clever things going on. It had good gameplay. It had dragons and generals bonding together in a way that kind of forced different game states in a, you know, a competitive game that eventually becomes team-based, sort of, partially, and gives you a lot of fun decisions to make. I really like playing through this one, and I think the art and presentation doesn't pull me in. I think that's the issue. I don't think it pulled me in then, and I don't think it pulls me in now. I think in both cases, the art and presentation are like, eh, it's okay for me, but it's not the thing that's capturing my attention, and so, combined with the fact that this is a game that really works best at a four player count for me in my opinion means this one's competing with other games for precious table time and I think that's part of the part of the the problem there is that competing aspect at the end of the day there's limited time effort and attention not effort there's no lack of effort there's limited time energy and attention and in the case of a game that is best with four players there are other games I'm going to want to play over this one despite how much I enjoyed it but I don't want to let it go either. It falls into that category where I'm like, I got it. I don't want it to leave because I remember enjoying it a lot. And I it, I gave it a four to five. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I stand by that rating. Because like, the fact that I don't want it to leave is part of that conversation. I remember enjoying it. But at the end of the day, at a four player count game, again, it's going to be played almost exclusively at four players for me. I, I just think it's going to be a harder time. Now, I might choose to dive into the solo mode. I might give that a shot and see how that plays out because like that could change how I how I engage with it or whether I hold on to it, even if it just gives it enough life to, to remind me the aspects that I liked enough and hold on to for later. But Dragon Ball Lords of Valor, I liked it a lot. I don't know if I liked it enough to make it work in a competitive landscape of other games asking for your time, effort, and attention. Uh, this is one where I definitely... I, I definitely... I like it. I do like it. I don't know. I don't know. There's no definitely. There's no definitely here at all. My next is going to be Eternal Palace, a dice placement and painting Euro game from Alley Cat Games. This is one where, it, again, it partially comes down to player count. Even though it's a one to five player game in theory, I think this is a game that plays best at higher player counts. At four plus, I believe. I could be wrong with that. Let's go ahead and find this out over here. Eternal Palace, and let's go to uh, BGG. Okay, let's see what BGG has to say with this one, because I'm pretty sure it's a place that's higher player counts. Also, the rating has certainly not been... You see, there we go. It's like, out of four player count is where it thrives, where that's going to be harder for me. It's the same competitive aspect, and combine that with a 6.5 rating does mean that I'm, you know, not as compelled to play this one as I was when I backed it. At the time, it looked very good, and it had elements of it that were similar to Kingsbridge, a game that I very much enjoy, and... Was it called Kingsbridge? No. No. Kingsbridge? Is that the game? Let's go back to BGG over here anyway. I think it's called Kingsbridge. Kingsbridge. 
Kingsburg, Kingsburg, Kingsburg is the uh, place from uh, Pillars of the Earth, I get a book series I love. But it had elements that were similar to Kingsburg, and I love Kingsburg, and so, I, but combined with that, the visual presentation, that is definitely a game that I was intrigued enough and wanted to back, and then it has this whole overlaying cars aspect where you overlay these tiles upon each other. I never played this game, I still have not played this game, but so many parts of it seemed like it would be a package that I very much enjoyed, and it's a package that I still want to play, I still have it, but I, I definitely have become less excited about it. The combination of the player count, which again is operating at a player count that I find I really have a harder time tabling, and the combined aspect of the rating not being as great, and it kind of shifted down. My hype has gone down. I, I Yeah, I, I still want to play this one. I will play this one at some point. I will almost certainly, but I just, I'm less excited about it than I once was. From there we have Orconomics, second edition, and from Ares Games. This is a game I had a lot of fun with when I played it. This is a Valeria style game, uh, you know, a uh, Machi Karo, Valeria, Catan, where you're rolling dice and assigning different sectors in the game. But it had an element of area control that was very compelling as you try to slowly take control of various regions. Uh, the way you had these different tiles in play, I kind of wanted a lot more variety in the tiles that would come out. But overall, I very much enjoyed Orconomics and thought it was a lot of fun. And now I'm kind of just sitting there thinking it, it's been so long. This is one of those games, and this is where sometimes part of the reason for a lack of, of hype, for the hype going down, is that enough time passes that you're like, I just don't remember why I was excited. It's been two years, it's been two and a half years, why do I still care about that thing I backed? In the case of Orconomics, at least I played it because playing it definitely has me certain that I know I enjoyed it and I know it was a fun, casual time with a degree of worker placement, area, a degree of area control, and then a whole lot of, of, of ability manipulation as you try to figure out the best combinations of abilities and then rolling dice figuring out who you're activating in the game system. And I like that system, again, in Valeria and Machikaro, I like that system them in, 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 in Space Base. All these games that have it, I like it. I don't always keep them all, but I always like rolling dice and seeing what activates in the game. I'm going to be giving Orconomics a shot. I'm still going to be continuing to play it, but I'm just not nearly, like, now I, I'm, I went from, like, hey, I totally want this game and I'm excited about it, to, like, I'll maybe play it at some point. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. I don't know exactly. It's, it's definitely... Definitely one where my hype has gone down as, I, as, a, as time has gone on. And again, I think a big part of it is the amount of time that has gone on. This is one that was massively successful, and I, that because of that, I don't imagine there'll be tons of expansions either, because one of the things I did want from the game is more various characters, so you have more of combinations of the ways you incorporate different characters in the game, and therefore how that affects the game state. And I don't think we'll see a ton of that. So that certainly limits my uh, my desire to continue engaging in it. But yeah, Orconomics, definitely one that, since backing it, has been less excited about. Another one that has time as being a factor is Shogun no Katana from Postscriptum. I played this game and really liked it. I thought it was an excellent puzzle of, of worker placement as you try to effectively build your katanas in the game, ultimately culminating with you building your Shogun no Katana, the Emperor Sword, and trying to be mindful of the, the tableau building in the game and the worker placement and the puzzle of gathering resources and moving your swords as you craft them. It was a fascinating little puzzle as you had your smithy and tried to rearrange. Where is your little smithy down here? You have to like, try to uh, puzzle out and move things through your forge in the game, which was very compelling. Uh, combine that with some like lots of miniatures, lots of expansions, lots of abilities, and Overall, I just really enjoyed the Euro mental worker placement puzzle that this game was offering, and I think it's incredibly well done. Also, two and a half years went by, and I got less excited about the game, and eventually it landed, and I, I actually found myself watching Thinker Themer's review to kind of figure out where they landed on the game, because even though I'd played it, I hadn't played it in two and a half years, and they started off, you know, very strong, but in various elements that, it, they, they actually built up my excitement as I started watching. I was like, yes, these are all the things I liked about the game, I'm glad they see it too, and then they kind of also t ended with the tempering of like, but also, like, these areas don't work as well for us, and then I found myself putting, putting being put in that same middle zone of like, I know I like this game. I know I had fun with this game. I also know two and a half years have gone by and I just don't know if I'm currently mentally inquisitive enough about what's going on with the game to pull it off the shelf compared to many other Euro games that I love. Something I always find fascinating is that the games I love always capture my attention. And then the games that I haven't played always represent the possibility, the promise, and the uncertainty of who knows how good these games could be, especially if they're well-rated. Versus the games in the middle. And Shogun no Katana came out at a 4 to 5 for me. And I, I like it enough, I would stand by that rating. In the case of Euro games, I find for mid to heavyweight Euros, a 4 out of 5 is not good enough for me. I found that time and time again, I need that 4.5 or higher if I'm going to sit there and give you that much mental thought and time. You know, 4 to 5 is great for a lot of categories. But I have so many 4.5s four, four or higher. I have Viticulture, I have Keyflower, I have I have uh, uh, Casa Burgundy, I have Lorenzo Magnifico, I have Hansa Teutonica, I have so many El Grande, Amerigo, Lancaster. There's so many games that would give a 4.5 or higher in that year in that euro category that shogun no katana it could be a 4.5 if i played it more or tried the expansions but i found myself not compelled enough and ready to move on from it 
two and a half years went by, and I just got less excited as a result. And then we have another one which I'm also very excited about, but again, facing strict competition, which is Theurgy, the area control game of Monsters and Miracles. This is one that I definitely very much enjoyed it, with some complaints. I had some complaints. I didn't love them the production aspect, or even the design aspect. It wasn't as much for me. What captured me in this game is the gameplay. The gameplay was incredibly compelling, had a lot of fun. This is one of those games that I introduced to my main game group. There's different ways I play prototypes, and introducing a game to my main game group, who likes to play games for fun, usually almost always means that I'm like, really, really like it, and I think it's really much, it's very much to their tastes. And in the case of cutthroat area control games with powers and abilities and lots of manipulation, Theurgy absolutely fits the bill and I think it is a great game and I think they will enjoy it. And right now, with it already landing and being on my shelf, already punched and everything, ready to go, I just find myself wondering, do I want to pull this off the shelf over DEI, over Rurik, over Blood Rage, over Kemet, over Inish, over so many of these other games? Now again, to be very, very clear, the fact that I'm even comparing it to these other experiences should tell you that I think Theurgy is a great experience, and I'm not getting rid of it. it I mean, not I can't say forever, but for right now, it's absolutely staying on the shelf because I remember how much I enjoyed the manipulation puzzle in this game and how much screwage, protection, manipulation there was in a game that was so well done. Played in a fairly decent playtime, coming in around 90 minutes, maybe two hours tops. It was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it and I'm eager and excited to dive back into the game experience and see what the final game is like. I also know that, again, in the genre of area control, there are so many games right now fighting for attention, and I find these games are hitting the table less right now. Just game group dynamics have shifted, and I find getting four players to the table to play a game like this, and this plays well 3-2, which does help, means it's more likely to be tabled. Theurgy is a great game that was fairly simple to teach, fairly simple to play, and had a lot going for it, with lots of powers and abilities and things. I'm excited to play this one, and I also don't know when I will. Both things are true. And from there, speaking of that category, we have Titans, a historical fantasy miniature board game from Go On Board. Uh, this is another one that I just, I mean, I've read the rule book for this. I've prepped to play this one. I have never played this game, and I want to play this game, but it's just, it. Titans is one that gives you area control, and it gives you a, a puzzle that, to me, at first look from the rulebook, seems like it's going to fall into the category of how in the world do you get enough stuff done in the game. And it comes with expansions and modules and all these different things, and I want to dive into it, but again, area control does is a hotly contested category, and as much as Titans falls into that genre, what's the rating on this one? I am curious on the rating. Uh, Titans right now, Titans, as much as it falls into the genre of being the unknown because of the fact that I haven't played it yet, 7.6 is not bad. It's not incredible, but it's certainly not bad. That could well be, you know, the, the interesting thing about area control in general or any genre, the interesting thing about any, any ratings is ratings aren't a... Ra ra board Game Geek ratings do not define my ratings. They don't define your ratings, but they do, to me, define a ge general barometer of where a game lies. A 6.5 that Eternal Palace is, is low enough that... It may well be a game that I enjoy, and I imagine I will, but this, there's a higher probability that it won't be a game I learn to love, because the discrepancy between a BGG rating and my own rating is often one, one and a half points at most. So a 6.5 in BGG might be a 4.5, best case scenario for me, assuming normal statistical deviations. Versus a 7.6 could easily be a 4.5 for me, or easily be a 5 for me, depending if I play it, because again, that one and a half point dist uh, distribution could be anything for me as far as playing it. Overall, and just to be clear, I was converting between a 10-point scale and a 5-point scale there. But Titans, great game. Really, not, how do I say that? Titans, a game I want to play, looks incredible, read the rules, excited to dive into it, and I have not been able to table it. And at this point, it's been so long since I read the rulebook. It's been a year and a half since I read the rulebook, anticipating playing it. And at this point, I'll have to read the rulebook all over again, and that means I need to prep for this with a dedicated game night that is being devoted towards playing this game. And I'm excited and ready to do so, but I haven't made it happen. Again, another crowdfunding campaign that I'm excited about the game in theory. I want to play the game, but I have not made it happen. The hype that I had, the excitement that I wanted to play it when it first arrived, has since gone away because of how much time has passed. Still excited. I just don't know when. Then we have V Commandos is the final one here, and this is another one that I don't know. This kind of pairs up with Alter Quest as being one that I don't know if it should or shouldn't be here, because there's excitement and there's reasons and all that. But V Sabotage, V Commandos slash V Sabotage, a game I backed. A game I was very excited about. The problem is Assassin's Creed kind of killed my interest in V-Sabotage. And I, I, I shouldn't say it killed my interest, but it, it certainly... 
here's here's the deal. Here's the difference between these games. Okay, V Commandos is a game I loved when I first played it. Again, originally known as V Commandos, it's a game I loved. I think it's incredible. I think it gives you such a compelling solo puzzle. I had complaints and critiques, and those complaints and critiques were improved upon in Assassin's Creed, based on the same system with a theme I prefer and an improvement on the complaints and critiques. The only problem with Assassin's Creed, and the only reason this is even a conversation, is Assassin's Creed is exclusively campaign based, and that makes it much more of a commitment to dive into versus V Sabotage. You can theoretically dive into as a one shot. That's the way it was originally designed. There are campaign modes, there are longer play sessions, but it's designed as a one shot. And this one is a stealth game. They're both stealth based games. But to me, the difference between the two is every time I say to myself that I should get rid of Assassin's Creed because I'm just not going to continue playing it. I also say to myself, no, the game is amazing and I refuse to get rid of it. It captures the stealth feeling of the video game, it captures the mechanics well, it did everything V Sabotage did, but it does so better in my opinion, with a theme I prefer, and so I'm not getting rid of it. And then every time I'm sitting there thinking it's time to pull out V Sabotage and dive into it and see what all the various expansions and modules have to offer, I just sit there thinking I'd rather play Assassin's Creed. And so it may well be that I may end up finally getting rid of V Sabotage without ever diving into all the expansion content I got. I may actually get rid of the game without choosing to fully experience everything it has to offer because every time I try to get rid of Assassin's Creed, I refuse to, and every time I try to play V Sabotage, I find myself not doing so. This is a game where absolutely the hype died, but it didn't die because of playing it. It died because of another game system that gave me everything this game system does, but it does so better with the only ex aspect, the only exception, being that the uh, the campaign app mode. But just right now, I have Assassin's Creed Apocalypse just showed up on my door, so I can go ahead and cover that one for the upcoming campaign, and all I am is excited about that compared to the way, in a way that I was not excited for, am not excited for V Sabotage. And I think V Sabotage is great. I think if you have the game, if you want to look into it, and especially if the theme calls you more, then you should get those games. For me, part of my problem is the theme doesn't call me more. For me, the theme of Assassin's Creed, I've never loved uh, standard World War type things as a theme. I don't find myself engaged in it. I usually persevere through games despite that as opposed to because of it. And so for me, Assassin's Creed has a better theme, fixed some of the issues for me, and I just need to get past that campaign mode blocker, which absolutely is a blocker, but a blocker that I think I still want to get past. Oh, and then technically I could say that the boxes for V Sabotage are more manageable. That box for Assassin's Creed is something else. And from there, let's just go a quick recap over these games. Should I or should I not have backed them? Because a big part of the conversation that I find is sometimes there's sometimes there's things have changed. There's there's, there's extenuating circumstances, and I'm going to go through each of these 12, these, uh, these 11 campaigns, going through whether I think I should or shouldn't have backed them at the time. Meaning, how much of this is hindsight, and how much of this is me being pulled in by the hype when I shouldn't have been. In the case of Alter Quest, I am happy I backed it. I think I made the right choice. I think a a bad rulebook, and of course all the drama with Blacklist games, have gotten in my way, but I, I am happy I backed this game, and I think I made the right choice at the right time with the knowledge that I had, and I still hope to be sitting down and playing it. In the case of Astro Knights, I think I made a mistake. I'm still going to give this a fair shot when it shows up, but I think I made a mistake. I think that it improved upon the aspects of Anne's End enough so that I enjoyed it, but it still has that card market aspect, and I just, I rarely find myself keeping rotating card markets. It is almost always fixed card markets for me. I think I made a mistake here. I think the hype pulled me in. The, the excitement at the time pulled me in a bit more. With Bone to Pick, I think the same thing. I think the excitement pulled me in at the time. I enjoyed the game, and I liked the game, and so I backed the game, and I didn't think through... Am I going to pick you off the shelf and pull you off the shelf in comparison with other games, or I was not critical enough about it? In the case of Dinosaur World, I think I made a mistake. I think I, I like Dinosaur Island, but I don't know if I liked it enough that Dinosaur World should have been an instant back for me. I should have waited. I should have gotten that retail. And then as usual, you know, if I really need and care about the game, I could have picked it out and hunted it down down the road. Uh, Dinosaur World is one that I do think I made a mistake on this one. I don't think I needed to back it. Dragon Ball Lords of Valor, I think I made a mistake, but only because of the player count. When I got this game, I knew it was a game that played with best with four players, and I knew that was my most competitive aspect, and I think that my, my enjoyment of the system had me getting it, but I think that, again, it's the, the balance is there's the enjoyment of the system, and there's the knowledge and the reality of what are you going to pick off your shelf and play, and I think Dragon Ball, even though I'm not getting rid of it yet, and now that it's here, I'm not ready to get rid of it, not yet, but it is one that I think this is a game that plays best with four players, and as a result, I'm going to hold off and wait to play it with four players. Then we have Eternal Palace over here, which I think... I don't know if this was a mistake. I don't know if this one was a mistake. I didn't play this game, and I want to play the game, and enough things looked good about it. I think I backed at the time, and I think a big part of my lower lower interest is those ratings that have shown up, and so I think that that's knowledge that I have after the fact. Things did change. I had additional knowledge after the fact that I didn't have when I backed the game. I think I would have backed this again at the time. Orconomics, again, I think... I think I may have been more excited about this one. 
I, I like these systems. I like these rolling dice and buying things systems, but I, I admit and I acknowledge that usually with these systems, I usually, the ones that have worked for me, the only one that I've really kept is Valeria Card Kingdoms. Almost all the other ones I have gotten rid of, and while Orconomics I'm still planning on playing and giving a shot, I think if I'm being more critical about what sees the most time and attention, I should not have backed this game. Shogun no Katana, I'm comfortable with the fact that I backed it. At the time I played it, I had less of a strong collection of Euro games, and again, I think two and a half years passed. I think I really liked this game, and I enjoyed it, and I'm comfortable with the fact that I backed it. Uh, my lack of excitement two and a half years later, when I've had more games, more competition, that definitely added to the, um, again, lack of excitement about it, but I still enjoy it, and would still happily play it. I don't think I made a mistake backing it. Theogy, I definitely don't think I made a mistake. This is one that I'm still happy I have. I'm just struggling to find time to to get it played. But this, to me, without it, without a question, is a game system that I very much enjoyed and am eager to dive back into it. I don't promise it stays in my collection, but I I, I know that I'm not even hesitant at all about whether it does or doesn't leave. It does not leave for now. Similarly with Titans, it's another one that I have no hesitation at all. I backed it for the right reasons. I still want to play it. Uh, I just haven't gotten the table, and that's gotten in the way. But I don't think I made any mistakes at all. I think that I'm completely fine with that one. And then V Commandos, V Sabotage, this is one where I couldn't have known how much I was going to like Assassin's Creed. I could not have known how much I would enjoy that system. And for me, that just makes Assassin's Creed... Assassin's Creed is a much better system and that, that has continued to capture my attention and imagination. And it's a, it's a better system and a, a theme I prefer more. But I think at the time, backing V Sabotage, based on how much I like the V Commando system, I think was absolutely the right choice. Just information post the game, even though I didn't actually play the game. And that's what we have. These are the 11 campaigns I could find out of all the hundreds of games. I, I have to think the exact number because I have GameFound and Kickstarter. I have Lake Pleasures 2 and all those. I think I've backed somewhere around 300 to 400 games in the years, in the, I don't know, six, seven years I've been backing games. That's a lot of games. And I think having 11 where it's not that I played the game and didn't like it, but it's where the hype died over time. I think it's a reasonable number, even though... I wish that number were lower. I kind of want to walk into games being excited all the time. I want it, I want my energy to be there from day one, the same it is from the, from the end, unless something has a reason to change it. Reasons to change it are different, but there's definitely a handful in here that I think got me pulled in in a way that I should not have backed them. Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know two or three games that, that you backed, and then they just stopped pulling you. Something about it stopped pulling you. It's not because you played it. But rather, time moves on, the game shows up, and you're just not excited about it the way you were before. And then also, use that to your advantage. The next time you're on a fence, the next time you're looking for an excuse not to back something, absolutely use that to your advantage to try not to back something. The reminder that sometimes, sometimes, the hype just dies. Until next time, I'm Alex Radical from Board Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.